Games like this make it seem like Capcom has a lot of enemies. Everybody wants to fight them. Marvel, SNK, and now Tatsunoko. Tatsunoko, an interesting choice. Because unlike Marvel and SNK, Tatsunoko is not a household name for the majority of the audience in the West. They're a Japanese animation company, and many of us probably know them best for Gotcha Man, which was retitled in the US as Battle of the Planets, a terrific old school cartoon that I used to watch back in the early 80s. But that also kind of proves my point. Battle of the Planets isn't nearly as well known as some other giant American cartoons like G.I. Joe or Transformers. But that issue stops at the marketing, because when you get down to the video game, the gameplay in Tatsunoko vs. Capcom is traditional Capcom vs. fair. And many of you will become fans of Tatsunoko characters and want to learn more about them because they fit right into this game. <laughs> This is a Nintendo Wii exclusive, and easily one of the best fighting games on the Wii. Unlike so many games coming out these days, the visuals are bright, colorful, and simply gorgeous. The gameplay is extremely fast and smooth. My only major gripe with this game is that the combat falls into the button mashing category. But the more time that you spend with it, you'll obviously learn how to mash your buttons in a strategic manner rather than just hammering away at them, which is basically what I'm doing just to figure out all the characters. Because throw away the old Street Fighter 2 controls, this one has a simplified button scheme, but you can also modify it and even use a fighting stick for the Wii. I'm playing with the classic controller Pro, which I would recommend. I couldn't even think of using the actual Wiimote controller for this one. So, keep in mind, this is not Tatsunoko vs. Street Fighter. In fact, there's very few Street Fighter characters in the game. And I think that's a good thing, because frankly, there's enough Street Fighter games. It's more fun to play as other characters and learn moves that aren't as familiar. This guy is definitely my favorite new character in the game, and when I had him paired with Chun-Li, they were unstoppable, but I have him teamed up here with Mega Man, who I'm also learning to play as. If you're unfamiliar with the Capcom vs. or the vs. Capcom series of games, what's cool about them is the ability to tag characters in and out of combat, because you go into a battle with two characters, and when they're not fighting, if they're wounded, they can regenerate some of their health. You can also pull them in for support moves, and generally the visuals are much wilder and the gameplay is more over the top than the Street Fighter series. Yeah, good stuff. There's no disc space wasted on a half-assed storyline. This is just about fighting. There's an arcade mode, a survival mode. You can obviously invite your friends over and play them together in person, just like the old days. And it has Nintendo Wii online support, which I tried, but it was taking more than a minute to find a game, which is way too long for me. Ideally, you coordinate with your buddies ahead of time and set up a game. And that's Tatsunoko vs. Capcom. It's a straightforward game. Yeah, there's some unlockable stuff, but basically it's all about fighting. And hyper ultra glorified visuals, which they do nicely on the Nintendo Wii, not always known for beautiful visuals. This is the kind of game that you either like or you don't like, but if you're into the previous Street Fighter or versus Capcom games like Marvel vs. Capcom 2, which is one of my favorites. Check this one out. I think you'll find some new characters which are fun to play as. You may or may not like the control scheme, but developer Aiting and Capcom have done a nice job bringing Tatsunoko vs. Capcom to the Wii. 
Now, if only I could get them to make Berserk versus Capcom, then I'll be very happy. Evil Otto versus Chun Li. Conduit. Let's see if I can outrun some alien laser blasts in this frantic, challenging first person shooter on the Nintendo Wii. Aha, take that punk aliens. What you didn't see is the 30 times before that where I died trying to shoot them all. That's your last one for now. Stay where you are. I'm sending a helicopter to get you on. The conduit. I like the game, but doesn't it sound like they're running out of game titles? What's next? The sidewalk. Well, probably the conduit too. I imagine this game will do quite well. It's one of the best shooters on the Wii by far. If not the best shooter, I think it's the best one that I've seen. It's easily one of the smoothest, most playable, best looking third party titles on the Wii published by Sega. The whole game reminds me of Men in Black mixed with Halo. Which is not exactly a bad thing, there's a storyline involving an alien invasion and conspiracy, blah blah blah, nothing you haven't seen before. Well, there's a nice single player campaign in the game, I have a feeling their focus was probably on the multiplayer. Because for Wii owners, there is a serious lack of multiplayer shooters. They've done multiplayer right with this game, it works very well. And I'll show that near the end of the review, but just note visually what a nice game this is. It's extremely smooth as well, and I have to comment on the music. It is excellent. That's my super happy fun ball, which opens doors and finds secret things. Do not taunt me when I'm packing all kinds of crazy ass weapons in this game. There's a lot of weapons to choose from. Has a bit of a time splitters feel both visually and with the gun selection. The Prometheus had designed such advanced weapon systems. Use the ASE device to hack into the... Control-wise, the conduit is very flexible, very customizable. Their system. You can really tweak the speed settings and sensitivity. I think it plays a lot like Metroid Prime Corruption, except it's far more action-packed. You point at the screen with your Wii controller to aim, you move around with a nunchuck thumbstick, and you can throw grenades by just flicking your wrist with the nunchuck, which works surprisingly well. The Trust has guided this nation for over 200 years. We shaped it into the preeminent superpower of the planet, and we will... I found that most of the guns seem to run out of ammo almost instantly, and they take forever to reload. 
Also, parts of the game are extremely simple, and then you get to sections which are ridiculously difficult. When you play the single-player campaign, it's definitely a challenging, cool game. That's a nice looking gun right there. If you have your Nintendo Wii hooked up to the internet, prepare to be entertained. Conduit multiplayer is awesome. It's nothing that hasn't been done before, but you just don't see multiplayer like this on the Wii very often. And because of that, there's a lot of people playing Conduit, so there's no shortage of other individuals to play against. Which is uh, kind of important when you want to jump into a multiplayer game with a lot of people. I had no problem playing it at all, it works just as well as any other big online shooter like Halo 3 or Call of Duty. You just jump right into a game, there's a variety of games to choose from, lots of guns, a nice map selection, it's smooth, and it plays like you want it to. It works as it should, always a good thing. Frequently things don't. If you want a shooter on the Wii, no question, pick up the conduit. My only other nitpicking gripe about the game is the cover art. It looks like a 1992 comic book. But whatever, you don't play the cover art. You play The Conduit, and you should. Excellent game. The first thing that you'll notice about The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword is how cool loft wings are. Where can I buy one of these things? After a few drinks with Lando in Cloud City, you can hop right off the edge and have a loft wing drive you home. Or in the case of this game, pilot your loft wing around the sky, the beautiful open expanse above the clouds. The second thing that you'll notice about Skyward Sword is, hopefully, the music, which is just fantastic. Loft wings have great stereos. Check out the beat. Yes, it's another epic adventure in the Legend of Zelda series, and Skyward Sword begins in the sky. Good morning, Carnage. I mean Link, and good morning, Zelda. What are we? Uh, what are we doing today? And you're taking off something. Oh, oh, that's the sailcloth. Yes. <laughs> that's an important feature in this game. Thanks for handing it over to me because without it, your link will be flattened. The sailcloth acts as a giant parachute. It's the game that Zelda fans have been waiting for to celebrate the 25th anniversary of The Legend of Zelda. Skyward Sword delivers an epic adventure with giant birds, fire-breathing monsters, and sword fighting with the Wii Motion Plus controller. Our adventure begins during what appears to be a pleasant date until... 
Something goes horribly wrong and Zelda plummets to the mysterious surface below. Oh no! Fortunately, our hero Carnage, or Link, just watched Point Break the night before. He leaps off his bird and chases after her, but he does have a sailcloth and lands safely on the surface, at which point he shouts, I am a Knight of Skyloft trainee. Whoa, there's a girl in my pocket. Oh, it's just you, Fee, that's right. She's like the guidance system in this game. Siri, where can I buy a pizza? I, I mean, Fee. Good thing a translator can't understand what she says. Come to think of it, none of the characters actually talk in this game. That's okay, because the storytelling works. The big question is, will longtime fans of the Zelda series be thrilled with this game, or find it to be an overhyped letdown? It's hard to say with certainty, Skyward Sword reminds me a lot of Ocarina of Time, and doesn't break from the tried and true traditional Zelda formula very much. There's lots of exploration, lots of puzzle solving, there's item and weapon collection, side quests, and of course, lots of action! And I'm pleased to say that the Wii motion controls, which can be a bit awkward in some action games, work extremely well for Skyward Sword. You guide Link using the thumbstick on the nunchuck, and sword fight with precision using the Wii Motion Plus controller. Sometimes you can defeat enemies by a controller waggling, other times you have to pay attention to where their shield is, or where they've let their guard down, and strike there. You also do other things like roll and throw bombs, swing on ropes, and guide your Skyloft and remote control sentry with the Wii Motion Plus. You'll be doing all the same things in Skyward Sword that you've done for years in the Zelda series. And even with the Wii Motion Plus controls, it plays a lot like a Zelda game on the Nintendo 64. The problem is that it also looks like it could have been on the N64. Or at least an early 1999 release on the Dreamcast. This probably won't bother fans of the Zelda series, because the Zelda games and Nintendo games in general are about gameplay and storytelling, and I would agree with that. Keep your priorities straight and keep Zelda true to what makes it good instead of giving me stupid uh, 3D glasses or something. And even though the art design and sense of scale is wonderful, I question whether or not they'll be able to reach a new audience who may very well balk at the visual style and not take the game seriously, even though it has so much to offer. For one thing, the controls work seamlessly. I immediately forgot that I was even using motion controls. And the sword fighting sequences are excellent, especially the ones where you have to use precision. <laughs> You lock on the targets with the Z button, flick your nunchuck to activate the shield and swing with the Wii controller. And everything else is pretty intuitive. This is all the gameplay I'll be showing. I don't want to give away any spoilers. Now some people want to see the entire game in these reviews, and if that's the case, play it yourself. I think you'll like where this one goes. One of the features I thoroughly enjoyed in Skyward Sword is the goddess cubes that you unlock by holding your sword skyward and then slashing them which reveals a treasure chest in the sky that you reach using your loft wing. You can move back and forth from the surface to the sky with the statues that also act as save points. You can collect bugs, upgrade your equipment, and do all of the other kinds of things that Zelda fans will want to do. And you can even make sloppy landings. I should get bonus points for that. The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword captures what's made the Legend of Zelda series one of the most popular series in video games for the past 25 years. It's unmistakably a Zelda game, it's got some clever innovations and a beautiful soundtrack, it's The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. This is Storybook Workshop from Konami for the Nintendo Wii, a game where you talk into a microphone, read stories, sing along to songs, and change your voice to sound silly. 
Storybook Workshop comes complete with a microphone. It happens to be the exact same microphone that you get with uh, Rock Band 2, the Logitech USB microphone. So uh, viewers, whether you have kids or not, I think that you'll learn a lot about this game just by watching some gameplay. Now those of you who are sticks in the mud, be beware, this game does encourage you to act silly. You might have fun with your kids if you play this game. I'm a robot. 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 I'm a robot. Don't be animate me. Please. Robots. Have. Life. I'm alive. What are you doing? Oh. Don't go to the end of it. Don't. Don't. Don't go to the bathroom. That. Why does that say bathroom? Hello. Holy crap, this is the biggest bathroom I've ever seen. The rework in here is crazy. It's like I'm in a cave. Although, technically a cave could be used as a bathroom. I'm... I'm... A, a, a copycat. A copycat. Oh, sweet. Oh, sweet. This is delay. This is delay. I love playing with delay. This is how they record delay. those, this monster, is how they truck record those monster truck commercials. Except they would uh, move Except the delay waves closer to each other. closer to each other. I'm the guy in the green. I'm the guy in the green. No, you're not. No, you're not. What, what do fairies do? I don't know. I like I like to fly. I I like to um I like to I like to collect stickers. I like to stick them all over things, and then and then sometimes sometimes the police will chase me, and and, and but but I always get away because I have wings, and the cops are you know they're, they're stuck on the ground shooting at me. Oh, oh. Oh, 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 oh. This is oh. weird. This is oh. weird. This is oh. weird. This is like one of those rising 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 like one of those Hi. I'm a big person. I like to wear yellow overalls. I'm a giant. I just stepped on somebody's village. Um, bum, 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 I like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, 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 twinkle. I wonder what you are. When the nothing shines upon, how can nothing shine upon something? That's stupid. Then you show your little twinkle, twinkle. Who wrote this? Is this even a real song? Little star, how I wonder what you are. Do 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 do. Word. Should be. Mary had a little lamb. Yeah, well, everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go because the lamb was controlling Mary. Mary would do the lamb's dirty work.
Little Red Riding Hood. Little Red Riding Hood's grandmother shook with fear at the sight of the wolf's sharp, scary fangs. You should have known better. Now I'm going to eat you. And with that, the wolf swallowed Little Red Riding Hood's grandmother whole. Wow, the wolf shouldn't need to eat for a week at least. Oh, Little Red Riding Hood, how nice of you to come. I'm so happy to see you. Oh my, Grandmother, what big ears you have. Why, the better to hear you with, my dear. Please come a little closer. Oh my, Grandmother, what big eyes you have. What is this, kid blind? It's a wolf. The better to see you with, my dear. Now please come a little closer. Foolish Little Red Riding Hood, I have tricked you. Little Red Riding Hood froze with fear at the sight of the wolf's long, sharp fangs and gaping mouth. Ah, you're not grandmother. Kill the wolf. How terrible. Help! It's too late for you now. You're all mine. <laughs> And with that, the big bad wolf swallowed Little Red Riding Hood in one swift gulp. Hmm? A wolf with a very big belly sleeping in a bed? How unusual. You must have eaten that nice old woman. What a horrible wolf. The hunter pulled out a pair of scissors and cut open the wolf's belly. This is a kid story? I don't remember this part. And what did he find but... Little Red Riding Hood and her grandmother. Partially digested. Oh, we're saved! Thank you so much! It's like a tauntaun. Yeah, this game is so rad. You can save your stories, you can play them back later. It's not so much a game as it is an awesome interactive multimedia tool that you can play with your kids. Or that they can play themselves and change their voice. This, this is just great. Storybook Workshop. There, an old shoemaker made shoes every day, but he never sold a single pair due to his inadequate marketing budget. Why don't you come over here and talk to Big Papa? with the ancient city and Calavera, its would-be king, began with my attempt to stop Toro Oro. The destiny of Zoro for Nintendo Wii, where Zoro protects innocent civilians from injustice and villains out for no good. Zoro, 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 great name. Zoro is old school. Zoro is older than James Bond and Lord of the Rings. Uh, by, by quite a few years. In fact, Zoro came out the year after World War I ended. The original story is not, not this game. Just, just to put this in perspective, Zoro predates the Atari 2600 by about 58 years. So Zoro makes an interesting choice for a lead video game character. I vaguely remember the, the old school Zoro television show and the comic books. And even back in the 80s when I was watching kids television, Zoro was really old school, but it was always fun. Swashbuckling never gets old. And swashbuckling is, you know, basically the act of sword fighting without actually stabbing anybody. Oh! <laughs> Are we fighting? Or am I giving you a lesson? So it's like the A-Team where uh, people shoot guns the entire episode and no one ever gets hit. Or G.I. Joe when the airplanes explode but they always safely parachute out. In Zoro you hack and slash enemies with a sword until they eventually give up and blink and go away. It's a kid's game made for a younger audience. This is not one that will appeal to you if you're out looking for an action-packed, violent video game. This game is squarely aimed at parents looking to buy an E-rated action game for their kids. Because Zoro doesn't disembowel anybody, he just drops cheesy one-liners and saves the day. With goodness. 
they have defeated me, Zoro. But just wait. Calavera will make short work of you. The next day was the Dia de los Muertos festival. I was enjoying the company of the fair Inez. I whip you into shape. It's one of those games where you hack and slash people using the Wii controller to mimic hacking, slashing, and thrusting. Like you were using a sword, you move Zoro around the screen using the thumbstick on the nunchuck. So it has fairly predictable controls. I personally found the game to be exceptionally repetitive at times. Zoro must defeat enemies and hit things with his whip to clear levels. I felt like I went through the same level two or three times frequently. When you build up Zoro's resolve, which I always just associate with carpet cleaner, he has special moves he can pull off where you use the Wii remote to simulate making a Z with his sword. Z for Zoro or Zaxxon. There's other moves that he gets throughout the game so you can stun enemies and then uh, hit them until they blink and go away. Are you tired? Do you need to rest? That is the destiny of Zoro. The game has an E10 plus rating, which I think is ridiculous. It should just have an E rating. Totally made for kids. It's nice to see a throwback to the old school Zoro character and swashbuckling. Excuse me, I didn't mean to step on your other left foot. Show some restraint. It's a shame the game doesn't have the budget of, say, the conduit, but, you know, what, what are you gonna do? For a kid's game, Zoro delivers the swashbuckling, wholesome goodness. Perhaps, after playing Zoro, your kids will be inspired to run around the house and chase each other with Nerf fun noodles or lightsabers, pretending they're Zoro. Although a lightsaber would do far more damage than a sword. At least it should. is more dazzling, my sword play or my smile? This isn't exactly how you're supposed to use this thing, but this is the Wii Nunchuck controller. Whenever I think of the word Nunchuck, I think of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, by the way. This works with the Wii controller, and I've reviewed this previously plugs right into the back here and does not work by itself. It needs the Wii controller to work properly. In many games like Metroid Prime Corruption and that Far Cry game I reviewed a while back, you use this controller for various functions, shooting, jumping, pointing, whatever. This thing uses the joystick up here to move around. It also has buttons up top, the C and the Z button. As many have pointed out, it somewhat resembles the bottom of an N64 controller. This thing is also motion sensitive, so you can jump and slash, and depending on what game you're playing, these, these both do a variety of, of things. And as I've said before, I think this is one of the most brilliant pieces of video game hardware ever, ever created. And when used properly, these things are really neat. And uh, let's take a look, closer look at this. When you take a close look at this thing, it's very light, very smooth, hard plastic and it's really just meant to be held with one hand and used like that. So it doesn't have many other functions. It's actually very simple, uh, very well designed, and quite ingenious. And I think the most ingenious thing of all about the Wii controller and the nunchuck is that Nintendo creatively came up with a way to get two items that you need to purchase when you want to buy one controller. Brilliant way to take our money. It's got a nice rubberized thumbstick up here. Exact same thumbstick they use on the Wii Classic controller. Nice resistance, feels good. I like the button placement. It doesn't even say Nintendo on it anywhere. Very clean, very simple. And it works well when it's made to work well, and that's really up to the game designers. Sometimes I feel like the Wii controller and the nunchuck are just sort of tacked onto the gameplay to say it can be played with the Wii. I don't 
particularly care for jumping like that. I think it's irritating. I prefer to use a GameCube controller for many of the games, like shooting games, but in games like Rayman Raving Rabbids, or um, games where you're using it for motion or drumming or whatever, this works very well. And, and that's, that's the Wii Nunchuck controller. You can also attack people with this by swinging it like a nunchuck. Or bang the camera with it. But it's so light that you're really not going to do much damage. You really want a real nunchuck for that. Maybe next time what they'll do, instead of creating the nunchuck, is they'll make the Wii Morning Star. You can put a nice ball, cast iron ball on the end of it and some spikes. Instead of a cord, you could use a chain. And then that way you could swing it and hit people and actually do some real damage. Although then it probably wouldn't play video games nearly as well. Oh well, whatever. a planet called Cybertron, until war brought its destruction and made exiles of us all. Waging secret war against us. Transformers Revenge of the Fallen for the Nintendo Wii. Here's what you do if you want to play Transformers Revenge of the Fallen and you own a Wii. You call up your buddy with the Xbox 360, buy or rent Transformers for the Xbox 360, and play that version. It's a bit surprising, but in stark contrast to the excellent Monsters vs. Aliens movie-based video game, the Xbox 360 version of Transformers 2 and the Wii version of Transformers 2 are completely different games. And the Wii version falls flat on its face compared to the 360 version. It has issues with the camera perspectives, suffers from clumsy controls, and graphically it looks like it could have been released in 1994. Comparing this game to the Xbox 360 version, which is the same thing as the PS3 version, would be like comparing the new Transformers movies to the awesome 1987 animated film. There's just no question which is better. But come on, I grew up with Transformers. Where are the Shark Decons? I have one on my desk right here. You should never leave home without one. I'm actually quite a Transformers enthusiast. They're one of my favorite lines of toys ever and cartoon series. So I love seeing the franchise make a return, except they don't really look like they transform into anything anymore. That doesn't have anything to do with this game though. I'm reviewing four different versions of Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, all of which are different. The Xbox 360 version, which is the first one I reviewed, this one here on the Wii, and I reviewed both the Autobot and Decepticon versions on the Nintendo DS, which are also a lot of fun. If you're a parent and your kids are really into Transformers and you have a Wii, they'll probably get some enjoyment out of this because you get to play as the Transformers, both Autobots and Decepticons, and smash things, there's explosions. But if you're really into video games and you want to play an excellent Transformers game, the 360 version is a lot of fun. I don't know why they couldn't have brought the 360 version onto the Wii, like they did with Monsters vs. Aliens. Autobots inbound. Bumblebee is hurt. Well, any time that you get to shoot Bumblebee is, is always a good thing. My least favorite Transformer ever. He was like the comic sidekick back in the day. I wish they would have just locked him into Space Train and flown him away. Or fed him to Unicron as an appetizer.
Yeah, if you have kids that are into Transformers, I think the best thing that you can do is buy them the DVDs from the original series. I'm not sure where they were going with this AllSpark. It kind of sucks compared to Energon Cubes. As you might expect when you play as any of the Transformers, you can transform from their vehicle form into the Mighty Robot, which is more than meets the eye. Or at least it is in the 360 version. I found the gameplay to be a bit repetitive after a while. And well, I think that this would be fun for kids who are really into Transformers, because you get to play as Optimus and Starscream. I, I generally felt like the 360 version allowed you to actually collect Transformers and play them. And play as them. Or play with them. Which is what I used to do, like, you know, back in the day, a couple minutes ago. Sharktagon, transform! In fact, here's, uh, here he is right here. He's got a little mouth that's like chrome and there's a head inside of it. And then, it's a little, uh, a little old here, but you can pull the legs out beneath him. Little feet fold down, and his hands come out of the of the Sharktacon feet. He's got little blue, like like uh, T Rex arms. I'm gonna go play with my Sharktacon. There's a lot of close quarters combat in the game where you fling your Wiimote back and forth to punch. You move your guy around using the thumbstick on the nunchuck. You can shoot enemies from a distance. In most respects, the controls are very similar to the 360 version, except that you don't have to do that irritating thing where you're constantly flinging the Wiimote around trying to punch. And the camera movement is independently controlled on the Xbox 360 version, so it never seems like you're locked in whatever camera perspective they decide to uh, lock you in. That drives me crazy because you can be holding up on the nunchuck and move forward and then they move the camera perspective and all of a sudden you're moving right and you like walk off a ledge or something and it just re reappears right away. See I snapped? And um, for a younger audience I think this game is ideal because it's not that challenging, it's fast, easy to pick up, fun for kids who want to just smash things with transformers and to be fair who doesn't want to smash things with transformers? The Wii version of Transformers is definitely aimed at a much younger audience than the Xbox 360 version. And the DS versions are, well, I think they're more neutral. They could be enjoyed by anybody. Autobot or Decepticon or Cobra. There's lots of unlockables in the game which, as you saw on screen, are extremely easy to collect because you're going to run into them as you're playing the game anyway. This is Monster Hunter Try from Capcom for the Nintendo Wii. What's the only thing better than palling around and making friends with a bunch of monsters? Hunting those bitches down and eating them. Mmm, you can carve a couple steaks out of that guy. They're good. Rub in some Montreal steak seasoning. They're gamey. They taste like a cross between venison and frog. Monster. Everything tastes better when it tries to eat you before you eat it. Show that steak who's boss. In Monster Hunter Try, no question, this is one of the best games on the Nintendo Wii. It looks and feels almost exactly like a PlayStation 2 game, which is a compliment. And no surprise, seeing as how Capcom's Monster Hunter series started out on the PlayStation 2. 
I started out creating a guy, but all of the outfits looked like girls' clothing, like he was going to the gym. So I just decided to create a girl. I was going to name her Vectrexia, but there weren't enough letters, so she's named Vextrex. And it turns out the outfit at the beginning doesn't matter anyway, because you just buy armor. The real kick in the pants is that Vextrex cannot hunt monsters on the Vectrex. That's my only complaint with this game. Capcom, if you're listening. This does not have a Vectrex release. Just think of the overlay. Monster Hunter Try. Colorful. Awesome. This is a Nintendo Wii. Exclusive. And really a terrific game all around. It's a giant action-adventure role-playing game with multiplayer. An in-depth single-player campaign. Lots to do. This game is just enormous. And most importantly, it's fun. Sometimes RPGs can be a bit more about just killing time or some or going through some deep plot or you know like I'm stuck in the fade for 12 hours. As much as I enjoy adventure RPGs, this is not a Lord of the Rings or Final Fantasy knockoff. It has its own thing and that's cool. I don't know that Monster Hunter Try is technically an RPG, but in some ways it feels like it. You go off on quests or missions, slay monsters or collect things and in the process you're saving a village bringing it back to life. What's what's impressive about Monster Hunter Try is that given the size of the game and the number of missions, it just doesn't get boring. On the other hand, it's not a quick pick up and play game either. This is one that takes some time. And it will take several hours before you even get into the game. It sends you off on some initial missions just to give you the feel for the gameplay. Like a tutorial, your first couple missions are pretty boring, like you're collecting mushrooms. And I hate mushrooms. I don't even like them on pizza. But then you get to the good stuff where you're slaying monsters and ripping out their intestines and bringing them back to town to make kids happy. You are the textbook definition of a hunter-gatherer in this game. You're not only hunting monsters, but you're also gathering things from the environment around you. You mine ore, you collect mushrooms and herbs and bugs, and you can mix and match things and create all kinds of stuff, including new weapons, and you can upgrade your weapons. There's swords, there's spears, and the bow gun, which is what I'm using most of the time, because it feels like a machine gun. There's a variety of people in town to talk to, numerous trading options, and there's just so much in Monster Hunter Try to keep you busy. If you're looking for one game, like one action-adventure game to play for a long time, look no further than this one. As you play through Monster Hunter Try, the missions obviously become more challenging and you open up new environments. Which are fairly large, but they're compartmentalized. You can see the map on the top right of the screen. You run to the end of the environment and there, there's a short loading screen and then it puts you into the next part. The next section of uh, whatever land you're in. So it's not a totally open world game, but it does feel like you're going somewhere. As I'm running through the desert level, in some of these screens the character is actually losing health because it's so damned hot. There's tons of items that you can take with you, and I thought it was cool that you killed monsters and just threw them on a barbecue in the field to regain some of your stamina. I guess it is a bit odd at times when you're standing in the monster as you're cutting it open. But that's just how badass you are. This game is badass. It really is. And you don't have to apply for any stupid license. You just go out and hunt. As if there's not enough to keep you busy in the single player campaign, which is crazy because there's more than enough to keep you busy, they even give you multiplayer. But wait, there's more. And we're watching it here. See? These aren't the monster hunters you're looking for. I like the sense of the open world community they give you here at the initial cutscene. Selecting servers and games works fairly well. The online is pretty slick and you earn a monster hunter rank as you play. You can go on quests with other people, real human beings, fight in the arena, and spend additional time enjoying Monster Hunter Try. This is one game where they definitely do not shortchange you. Monster Hunter Try is worth every penny if you enjoy this kind of game. Watch my review of the Wii Classic Controller Pro to see that controller in action. 
I recommend it for use in this game, but if you don't have a classic controller, the Wii Nunchuck and regular controller will also work. Monster Hunter, try! Try it now! When I saw that Speed Racer was being made into a live-action CGI-enhanced movie in 2008, I was super not excited. Because there's some cartoons and animation that should not be tampered with and made live-action. Like Garfield and Speed Racer. But for whatever reason, I was okay giving the video game a chance. It's Speed Racer! The game based on, well, the movie based on the original awesome 1960s cartoon. Oh snap, indeed. What's surprising is that the game actually looks pretty cool. And what's even more surprising is that it's almost good. Almost, but not quite. Off to the scrap heap. Down to a flicker. Speed Racer is on the Wii. It's played using the motion control and wheel, like Mario Kart. If you use the wheel, there is no classic controller support, unfortunately. You pull off what they call car foo tricks to attack your rivals on the track by holding down the D-pad and shaking the wheel rapidly, which then slows down time and completely interferes with the race. Oh yes, it's it's true. They were close to making a good game with this one, but but fell a bit short because that car foo thing gets in the way of what would otherwise be a decent racing game. It's like a cross between Mario Kart and a futuristic combat racer like Fatal Inertia or F Zero. They should have just picked one or the other, though. <laughs> I'm coming to get you. I'm knocking on your door! You now me! You are good, but I am better! I sent me to your scream! I don't want to remember me! I'll get revenge! Oh no! Oh yes! See? See, isn't that irritating? That irritating slowdown effect and awkward combat controls breaks the flow of what would otherwise be a decent futuristic combat racing game. The visuals and car designs are kind of neat, and the Dynasty Warriors style pictures and short dialogue is, is cheesy and campy, but so is, so is the series. That's almost acceptable. What's unacceptable is because of that slowdown and emphasis on car foo and battle tactics that don't work very well, winning races becomes a matter of luck rather than actually driving well. Like, if you think winning Mario Kart Wii is a matter of luck, <laughs> try this. Fortunately, you compete in various championships, which are a series of races, and if you can get into first place early and stay there, you have a fighting chance of getting some points. But if left to fight the pack, just, just forget it, because you'll get spun out, turn sideways, and crash into a wall. There's nothing else you can do about it. Fine. Hey, it's Racer X. For what it's worth, the character and vehicle selection is pretty cool in Speed Racer, even if it's not true to the original TV series. Also, Speed Racer on the Wii is incredibly affordable these days, brand new. There's no online, but you can play against a friend locally. For serious fans of driving games, you may find the luck-based winning and losing aspect to be irritating, but Speed Racer would probably be a good game for the youngins. It's generally quite difficult to fly off the track and lose completely. That's one thing the game does. It, it keeps you confined on the course. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, you also have rivals, and you can choose allies, which will attack your rivals. I think all of that is pretty stupid. I I'm there to race. Everybody is my enemy. Except Trixie, because you know whenever there's trouble, she shows up in a helicopter. It always looks great, and she's cheerful. It's Speed Racer for the Wii. Hey, Mickey fell asleep reading Alice Through the Looking Glass. Ironically, when he gets out of bed, he climbs through a mirror. Oh, malicious. Kids, don't try that at home. Weird things happen. For instance, you could walk in on a wizard who's been living behind your fireplace for all of those years, putting the finishing touches on a world for things that have been forgotten. Things that have been forgotten. A world full of passwords for various email and Facebook accounts. Anyway, as you would expect, the mischievous Mickey Mouse begins to tinker with the unknown. And really bad things happen as he is transported to the wasteland which he has helped to create and embarks on a magnificent adventure in Epic Mickey for the Nintendo Wii. When I first heard about this game, I thought it sounded epic gimmicky. Playing as Mickey Mouse fighting enemies with a paintbrush? Come on. But after spending five minutes with it, I immediately changed my tune and was sucked into the adventure. Because Epic Mickey is the perfect trifecta of video game design. It has a compelling plot, it's well made with high production value, and, most importantly, it has a creative control scheme that works well and makes the game fun to play. Because above all else, Epic Mickey is fun. <laughs> When used incorrectly, the Wii nunchuck and Wiimote controls can become gimmicky when controller waggling, pointing at the screen, and standard video game controls are all employed at once. Epic Mickey succeeds where so many other games have failed, as you control Mickey Mouse in these beautiful environments using the nunchuck's analog stick to move while the nunchuck shoots thinner and the right control shoots paint. In between levels, you've also got some of these beautifully stylized 2D platforming levels inspired by Mickey Mouse cartoons of the past. Sometimes in tight, confined spaces, it's difficult to see where Mickey is going when the camera is pulled back behind him. Hitting one of the buttons then allows you to see through Mickey Mouse's eyes in a first-person perspective. All of these tools and tricks and control mechanics have been used in other games, but in Epic Mickey they just come alive and enhance the incredible adventure because no matter how good an adventure is, if the controls are awful, nobody wants to play it. While Mickey Mouse is armed with a paintbrush, it's not that simple. He fires paint and thinner which affect enemies and objects on screen in different ways. If paint were time, this would be like Singularity with Mickey Mouse. Paint builds and thinner removes. When you fire thinner at enemies, it uh, hurts them, and paint will make them become your friends. Need to activate a gear? Give it a blast of paint. Need to remove something from a pipe? Shoot it with thinner, and so forth. The first level comes across as a bit of a dark, demented funhouse, but the game livens up quickly and has above average visuals for the Nintendo Wii. This is one of those games that just gets it all right and manages to move smoothly the entire time. There's no sluggish slowdown or jerkiness in Epic Mickey. As you can probably tell on screen, the levels are fairly sizable and pack a lot of things to do. There's treasures that you'll have to use some tricks and puzzle solving to unlock and a variety of collectibles laying around everywhere. It's a combination puzzle-solving slash 3D platformer when you get down to it. 
more so than just a straight up action game. As Mickey enters each environment, he's given objectives, and you as the player have to learn how to shape the environment to literally make it do what Mickey needs to do to move on to the next level, while fighting off enemies and jumping from thing to thing with precision at the same time. If puzzle solving, action adventure, and well-made 3D platforming is your thing, you've got to give Epic Mickey a shot on the Nintendo Wii. I absolutely love seeing Mickey Mouse in his own games because uh, these days it seems like the Disney name is associated with crappy teen programming, but in reality it should be associated with some of the best cartoons ever made. And Mickey Mouse is the king of cartoons. <laughs> And if there's anyone that can make Mario and Sonic just step aside with the wink of an eye, it's Mickey Mouse. He commands that kind of respect, and this game is worthy of having his name. You've got to remember that Mickey can literally do anything. He could burn people with monsters and cut them in half if Disney would let him. In fact, he may have already done that in Fantasia, I'm not sure. If you remember that song, then you remember Blaster Master, one of the most innovative 2D side-scrolling adventures on the Nintendo Entertainment System that also shifted into a top-down adventure mode with some challenging badass boss battles. Blaster Master is one of the most memorable games on the NES and one of my favorites. Released in 1988, the Blaster Master game cartridge was totally rad. There's no other word for it, and, and if you see the packaging artwork, you'll know what I mean. It makes TNC Surf Factory look subdued. You needed to wear jams to play Blaster Master, or any other game on the NES for that matter. And don't forget your Swatch Guard. In all the excitement, you could bang your Swatch against something. To hear me ramble on endlessly about how much I love Blaster Master, you can watch the classic Game Room review of the original Blaster Master on the Nintendo Entertainment System. This, however, is Blaster Master Overdrive for the Nintendo Wii, a reworked version of Blaster Master. The gameplay is pretty much identical, but does it have the same magic as the original? This is almost a remake of the original, but not exactly. The gameplay and the general objective of the game is, is pretty much identical. You're driving Sophia, your tank-like truck thing, through different levels, but you can't go to the next level until you've beaten an end boss and upgraded Sophia. After level one, you get a grappling hook, which turns it into the Bionic Commando of all-terrain vehicle underground tank things. Now I can grapple and swing to level two, which I previously could not get to. Later, you increase your firepower and get the hovering power-up. The game has a wildly unbalanced difficulty level, just like the original. The overall side-scrolling part where you're driving around in your truck is not very difficult. But any time that you get out of it, you're in severe danger because your little guy is extremely vulnerable. Especially underwater. The underwater scenes in this game were really hard. The battles in the caverns aren't too tough, but the boss battles become extremely challenging, just like the original Blaster Master. Not because they look like they'd be all that difficult. If you were flying, like, the Raiden fighter jet, you'd have no problem. But the guy in this game is so woefully underpowered and slow 
that the simplest boss battle actually becomes quite challenging. But as I said, that is also how the original game was. Well, I'll applaud them for making the game very similar to the original and definitely bringing it back because Blaster Master is a very cool series that should see a revitalization. It feels like they could have thrown more into this game and made some wildly imaginative, creative environments. Even the original NES version has more interesting environments than this game. Also, there's no classic controller support, which is baffling, considering it's a classic style game that you can download for the Nintendo Wii. I'm playing this with the standard Wii controller, which is not bad, but it's almost impossible to move your guy diagonally. And to strafe, you have to move your finger in a very awkward position to grab the B trigger under the Wii controller. And to top it all off, it's not widescreen. But you can save your game in certain caverns, that's quite handy. Because Blaster Master is not a game that you just play from point A to point B. You play from point A to point D, back to point B, over to point L, then back to C, and then somewhere else. Maybe you forgot to search some other cavern for something. It's not non-stop action. There's actually quite a bit of exploration and vehicle and person upgrading in Blaster Master. It's as though Sunsoft is testing the waters to see the interest in Blaster Master. Do we want to go further, revitalize the series, and put out a bigger release based on Blaster Master? I think they could have gone further with this game, but it's still fun. And packs sufficient frustration to remind me of the original. Because when you can't beat an end boss, you have to then backtrack and figure out what you missed. If there's any health increasing power-ups that you can feed your guy because, boy is he weak at the beginning of this game. For those who have never played the original, I'll recommend it if you like old school NES 2D style games where you memorize attack patterns and have to attack end bosses with extreme 2D precision. Those of us who remember the original might find it interesting just to see a reworked version. It's uh, just that, in my opinion, it's too bad this doesn't have quite the pizzazz of some of the other fabulous re-releases that we've seen lately, because it could. But it's nice to see an old favorite revisited for a new game console. It packs some adventure, exploration, and definitely a challenge. Blaster Master Overdrive. to give Nintendo credit, they have one heck of a design department because this is the Wii video game controller, which looks a heck of a lot different than any other game controller I've ever played with. And it's, uh, you know, it feels more like a lightsaber or a television remote than a game controller, yet somehow this is a brilliant little piece of machinery that works very well for a variety of different games of all different genres. And let's take a close look at this because it's well, it's really fascinating. It's got blinking blue lights on it. Who doesn't like blinking blue lights? I desperately wanted to hate this thing when I first saw it because it doesn't resemble any video game controller I've ever seen and it's so different, how could it possibly be any good? I figured it was just some marketing gimmick from the marketing masters at Nintendo, but in fact this is a brilliant piece of machinery that works with, uh, with magic which is short for I'm not entirely sure how it works, but it uses a sensor bar on top of the television. You can swing it around, it senses your motion. And after playing Wii Sports Bowling and Wii Sports Golf, I, I have to say this is just terrific when it's used properly by the game designers. And I'll get into more of that in a bit, but when used properly, this is an amazing, powerful piece of video game controlling equipment. And Nintendo, who, you know, when they went so far as to actually make this thing work sideways for old-school video games with their virtual console. When playing it sideways you use a d-pad here and then you can use the buttons over there for shooting or jumping depending on what game you're playing. And I think the d-pad is a bit small 
at least for adult hands, for playing games on Virtual Console. The buttons, the buttons are very good, of course. And the whole, the whole style of it is somewhat awkward, yet it's functional. If you have a Wii and you want to download a Virtual Console game, you don't need to spend any more money on anything. You can use this to play it. It will work properly. There's you know, better controllers out there, like the Wii Classic controller for those kind of games, but this, this still works. It has a trigger down there, so you can use it for shooting things, or you can use it in golfing games for gripping it and swinging. And this is used in a variety of different ways. I like that it has a speaker on it which they also use in, in different ways for various games. That's kind of neat. There's a power button up there, A button, home, plus, minus, one and two. I have mine and it's rubber coating, nicknamed the Wii Condom, which is ribbed for more grip. And uh, that's cushioned here, so you can take this thing and, um, well, I guess if you accidentally throw it at the television or your dog or a window, it's, you know, it should bounce off of it and not destroy anything. Uh, it does actually provide more grip and gives a little more weight to the unit, which is not bad. You can also take the rubber thing off, and this is what it looks like. Without that, I have two of them. The Wii only comes with one. You can find these newer used out there, 35 40 bucks. It has a little strap on the end of it, so you can strap it around your wrist, and supposedly that'll help it not go flying off and, and puncturing somebody's forehead. Actually, I like the rubber thingy on there because it does give more grip. But when uh, the, Wii, the Wii designers were thinking of this thing, they went beyond just a controller. You use this in a variety of other controls, like the Guitar Hero control. You actually insert the Wii, or one of the most ingenious things I've seen out there, the Wii steering wheel for a Wii Mario Kart. Let's take a look at this. You just fit it in here. You slide the strap through there, lock it into place, push it down. The uh, little button back here uses that trigger thing, which is pretty clever, and it senses the motion of the steering wheel. I'll do a separate review of the wheel itself, but this thing is pretty ingenious when you really get down to it. Leave it to the imaginative fellows at Nintendo to create this and have it be so successful, because really it looks so bizarre. It looks like you should be operating a television or slaying Jedi. The Wii controller is best used in games where you swing things or throw things, and even then, I, it, it's really up to the game itself and the programmers to to use it most effectively. I don't care for it very much in shooters, and when you you know games like Metroid Prime Corruption, which are pretty good games, they use this thing with the nunchuck controller, and I'll get into this in a separate review. I'm not a huge fan of pointing this at the television and using it. I'd rather swing it around, but. You know, some people actually love it for pointing it at the television because they say it works more like a mouse. You know, that's really subjective, but you know, this, is, this is fascinating, and although the Wii itself has its pluses and minuses, you know, it's not for everybody, that this controller, you have to at least give them credit, this is an ingenious design. And uh, that's it, that's the Wii controller. If you have a Wii, you're really going to need one of these things to play it. What they need to do is release a special edition one of these things that looks exactly like Luke Skywalker's lightsaber. That's what I want. I also want it to have a green lightsaber beam come out of it and give me the ability to go and attack Jedi. So if anyone can do that, it's Nintendo. Please make me a lightsaber. It, it can also play Wii games, that's cool, but really I just want a lightsaber. So come on, make me one uh, with a green blade, please. Vertigo on the Wii. It's not just an Alfred Hitchcock film anymore. Now it's a video game. And a darn good one. When you think of the top shelf games for the Nintendo Wii, you think of Mario Kart Wii, Metroid Prime Corruption, The Conduit. Vertigo is right up there in terms of technical quality and outstanding gameplay. 
It's a completely different style of game. In fact, it's hard to really describe what this game is. It's a kind of racing game. It's like Mirror's Edge meets Fatal Inertia crossed with a pinball machine. Oh, oh that's, that's gonna leave a bruise. Get used to that, you constantly fall to your death in this game. Well, not really, because you're safely on the couch, but your Zorb pilot, presumably, is at least injured, emotionally. It's uh, like Ball Blazer for the Atari 7800 in that respect. You're a futuristic athlete competing in a futuristic sport. Roll your way through the checkpoints as fast as possible without falling off the edge. This isn't a Super Bowl. It doesn't bounce back. But hopefully your pride does, because you'll fall to your doom frequently. This game can be extremely, extremely frustrating. Level completed. If you have the tendency to smash your video game controllers on the ground when you get challenged in a game, be careful when playing this game, because the Wii controllers aren't inexpensive. At times, you'll want to just hurl them across the room. Or at least I did. Maybe that's just a problem I have with anger management, taking it out on poor innocent video game uh, controllers. It goes back to the Atari days, but those those controllers were like indestructible. The controls in Vertigo are very interesting, and I think you really have to play it for yourself to get the full understanding of how unique they are and how well they're used in this game. Most games for the Wii where you use the controller for motion usually involve you swinging the thing around or flailing it back and forth in one way or another. In this game, you twist it and tilt it with precision. As you play through the game, you win upgrade points and can modify your Zorb, increase its speed and braking power. The brakes on this thing are ridiculous. It just slams to a stop. And you find out quickly that's very important to stay alive. Watching the screen makes this game look easy. Sure, you just go fast and follow the path, but it's really not like that. It's actually extremely challenging to keep this thing moving at a steady pace at a high speed and stay on the track. There's several dozen courses through nine different environments in the game. You unlock different worlds as you continue playing it. There's a challenge mode, arcade mode, and Zorb bowling mode. In many of the levels, especially when you get to the later ones, it's not clear at all when you start playing them what direction you're supposed to go. And that does add to the frustration of the game at times. This is the kind of game you need to walk away from occasionally and come back to. Did you see I just ran over that guy's toe? Sorry. When you get a run just right and make it without falling off or or plummeting to your doom, it just feels great. Not only can you modify the performance of your Zorb, but you can also modify its appearance which is a really cool feature in this game. You can even make it an 8-ball. I'm not even making that up. This is a really cool game. When you play it on a high-definition television, through the uh, component cables out of the Wii, if you have it set to that HD TV setting, it looks outstanding. Now, it's not in HD, but it's very, very sharp, colorful, and looks terrific. They have, they have really nice level design. Their use of color is really cool. Visually, it's, it's a very beautiful game. The music deserves mention as well. It's a very well-produced techno-style soundtrack. Sometimes it's really laid back, other times it's in your face. It complements the game perfectly. Like you wouldn't want banjo and fiddle to Vertigo. Although some U2 would work. If you like any futuristic racing games like Fatal Inertia or Hydro Thunder, this is a game you need to check out if you have a Wii.
Or if you like those accelerometer games on the iPod where you're guiding a marble from one point to another by tilting and moving your iPod with precision, you'll also get a kick out of this game because it's basically the same thing except you're piloting a bowling ball at 300 miles per hour. I wasn't able to try this, but it even works with the Wii Balance board. What a cool game. This one just takes me by surprise. If you've ever wondered what it would be like if you were hanging out with Lando Calrissian in Cloud City and then Chewbacca just walked by and swatted you off the edge and you fell, that doesn't have anything to do with Vertigo except uh, that one level reminds me of Cloud City a lot. Awesome game. Check it out. If you're looking for a video game with non-stop action intensity and amazing gameplay, then My Aquarium 2 is probably not the game you're looking for. But if you're looking for a relaxing, chilled out aquarium simulator, then My Aquarium 2 is exactly the game you're looking for. This is affordable, downloadable WiiWare for the Nintendo Wii, and surprisingly, I really enjoyed the first My Aquarium. It's not a science fiction action game. You can't even breed these fish together with mutants and stuff and turn them into horrible monstrosities that attack people. I wish you could. I'm going to suggest that for the next one. You can't even give them robot exoskeletons with machine guns and flamethrowers, but you can breed fish, make a happy aquarium, and unlock all kinds of new sea creatures and things floating in the seas. It's a relaxing game. It's like a glorified screensaver with a bit of involvement. Because while you can't do much, you do design an aquarium, choose which fish to place into that aquarium, feed them, sort of care for them, and uh, kick back and maybe enjoy the fish tank every now and then. For those with kids, it's actually a pretty cool way to get them into aquariums and fish without spending a fortune on an actual aquarium and killing off dozens of fish which cost real money. Part of the fun in my aquarium is keeping a tank active and keeping your fish alive long enough to unlock all kinds of new fish and creatures like jellyfish and things that you probably won't be finding at your local aquarium store. Now down to business here, My Aquarium 2, the sequel to My Aquarium, is not much of an improvement over the original. It's a bit of a disappointment, in fact, not what the game does wrong necessarily, it does exactly what the first one did, but doesn't improve upon it much. The, the aquarium editor is better. They actually have improved that because in the previous game it was very difficult to place objects around the aquarium. And there's a few new objects and additional aquarium sizes, but there aren't many new backgrounds, there aren't many new plants or anything really. And the, the biggest difference up front that you'll notice is that the fish selection is more exotic. In the first game, you started with fish that you could actually go to your local aquarium, at least in the United States, and buy, like neon tetras and zebrafish and stuff, but in this game, you're getting fish that are quite interesting. And while I've referred to this as a video game, it's not really much of a game, but there is a sense of accomplishment. Because there's numerous fish and other creatures to unlock in the game, 
and it's not entirely clear how to do it. I've kept my original fish tank alive for more than a year now, and I still haven't unlocked everything in the original Maya Aquarium. This one's kind of creepy. Any, any aquarium with symmetry is terrifying. I'm going to tap on the glass and anger that thing. It's unfortunate you can't raise the temperature and torture these fish like you could in Seaman for the Sega Dreamcast. Similar to the first My Aquarium, there's a lot of stuff in here that I'm not showing you because I haven't unlocked it yet because it takes a long time to do so. My Aquarium is not a game for those with no patience and an itchy trigger finger because you can't shoot these damn fish or bread them and deep fry them either. Bastards. But you can enjoy a serene aquarium. I really wish they would have done more with the musical selection. Maybe licensed some sound garden. My Aquarium 2 is set up so that you can purchase and download new add-on content, which I'll show you here. Because, like everybody else, I've always wanted an aquarium with a full-size giant squid and sperm whale. It makes me feel like the bad guy from James Bond's The Spy Who Loved Me, except unlike a Bond film, you can't throw unsuspecting people into your aquarium. And watch their reaction as a giant squid eats them. Ah, <laughs> oh, there's so many things they could do, like mutant angry sea monkeys, big daddies, snorks, big daddies stomping on snorks. Yeah, that's my aquarium too. It's a chill game. I think they could have done more though. And uh, hopefully for the next one, because there's, there's really limitless possibilities here. They could have my shark tank where you take your friends' avatars, their me's, and toss them into my shark tank. time I've felt that the Wii Classic controller is the best controller for the Nintendo Wii, but they've improved upon this with the Wii Classic Controller Pro. For professional use. Pro. I love it when they use the word pro for video game accessories. Let's talk about another controller with the word pro, the Atari 2600 Pro Line Trackball for professional Atari players pro. They, they may as well have just used the word platinum or extreme pro. But the, the, the big difference between the Wii Classic Controller Pro and the Proline Trackball is that this actually works. This thing is a complete piece of junk. Never buy one of those for your Atari. They're awful. If we look at the Classic Controller Pro right next to the classic controller, you can see that they're very similar, except this has the obvious hand extension things down here that you can hold on to. But the analog sticks are also further apart, because when you hold this like this, your thumbs generally move out more towards the outside of the Wii controller. Better positioning for this configuration. But that's not the only difference. The Z buttons have been moved into a traditional PlayStation 2 configuration, making this feel a lot like the PlayStation 2 controller. Which is a good thing because the PS2 controller is one of the best controllers ever made. This is a lot lighter though, it doesn't have any, any rumble function. And it is essentially wireless because to use it, you plug it into your standard Wii controller in the back here. And now you have a wireless controller, so it really is Pretty much the exact same thing as the classic controller with some modifications. As far as I can tell, the buttons and the D-pad and the analog sticks are all exactly the same. The placing of the select home and start button are also the same. Obviously this one is black with a piano gloss finish making fingerprints extremely obvious 
I wish they would have gone with more of a textured surface like the Sega Genesis controllers. But let's take a look at the side of this thing. That looks really familiar. Let's see what I have over here. Ah, PlayStation 2 controller. Yeah, very similar in uh, pretty much every way. Although the analog sticks on the PlayStation 2 controller are far better. They're just smoother. But for the Nintendo Wii, this is ideal. Far better than using the Wii controller and nunchuck for many of the games that have more of a standard video game interface. Obviously, you don't wave and swing this one around for motion control. Ironically, while all of the competitors are trying to come up with their own motion control accessories, Nintendo is busy producing better game pads. Aside from the obvious color difference here between these two units, the major difference between the classic controller and the classic controller pro is that you're a professional when you're using this one. Now, it's that this one feels more like a PlayStation 2 controller, and this one feels more like an old school gamepad. And this one's, this is basically the exact same controller with the hand things put onto it. So if you really prefer to play old school games on the virtual console with a gamepad, like the old school Super Nintendo gamepad, then go with this one. If you like using the PlayStation 2 controller, this is the one that you want. Uh, one game in particular, which works very well with the Wii Classic Controller Pro, is this one, Monster Hunter Tri from Capcom. This controller is so badass that it actually made its way into the Monster Hunter Tri instruction manual. Look at that. Even they're recommending that you use this thing. Some of the new adventure games like this one require you to move your character around with this stick and then you can rotate the camera with that stick. Fairly traditional dual analog stick control. So very, very nice controller for that. But you can also do the same thing with this if you already have one of these. I've been using this controller for numerous games on the Nintendo Wii for different reviews. The Monster Hunter Tri review uses this controller, Dead Moon and Biohazard Battle, both downloadable from the Virtual Console, are played using this controller. It works well for new adventure games like this one. It works well for old school shooters and arcade games. The picture on the packaging looks so real. Now you can be a professional Nintendo Wii video game player with the classic controller Pro. It does look cool. I'll give them that. Let's take a look at one image here in the Classic Controller Pro instruction manual, the operations manual. Like you need a manual to learn how to use this thing, but right, let's take a look at this picture here. Keep in mind that even if you're using the Classic Controller Pro, professionals still keep their Wii controller in the safety condom thing. There's two types of people in the world. People who love Pokemon and want to collect them all, and people who think they should be thrown into a blender and then served over a bed of nachos. I'm not going to tell you which kind of person I am, though, although I could really use some nachos. But I will say that Poke Park Pikachu's adventure is definitely aimed at those who want to collect them all and not serve them over nachos. That'd be colorful. I thought one of them just got shot. That was that was the starting pistol. They're they're racing. I'm recording this right before lunch, so they uh they do you think they taste like chicken or blueberries? More than just a collection of mini games, Poke Park, Pikachu's Adventure on the Nintendo Wii is an adventure game that not only encourages you to meet and collect all of the Pokemon, but it literally forces you to collect all of the Pokemon. So you become friends with them, and then add them to your Facebook account or something. And there's like thousands of these things. As Pikachu, you're trying to save the park by opening a gateway which will allow Godzilla to come in and stomp on all of them. At least that's the version of the plot that I made up. Nice job! You've electrocuted one! That is a good job. 
I'm gonna do that to all of them. I guess I'm definitely on the nacho side of things. At its heart, the gameplay is very simple. There are a number of mini games, and you run around and meet Pokemon. Sometimes they'll want to fight you or have you chase them or play hide and go seek. And you have to meet them all to play through the storyline, and you'll need certain Pokemon to play certain events. Like the ones that look like weird ass monkeys do different things than the ones that look like deformed birds. These attractions, as they're called, are essential to the storyline, and you'll find yourself playing them like mini games, controller waggling, button mashing, and uh, flinging your Wii controller all over the place in order to make your Pokemon do different things. Jeez. As you play through the game, you'll find new levels, like an ice level, lava level, and a haunted level. Pikachu will level up and become stronger. And technically, there's nothing wrong with the game at all. Actually, it's bright and colorful, and uh, appears to have relatively high production value for a kid's game. It is a kid's game. And if your kids like Pokemon, this will keep them occupied for a long, long time. Because there's a bunch of events, and they're all different depending on which Pokemon you play them with. I choose you! No, Paul. And here's a look at Hide and Go Seek. There's not much else to this. It's an adventure game, lots of things to collect, lots of things to do, lots of mini games, and a giant truckload, a container ship full of Pokemon. Now, let's see if we can't find this guy. I'm going to use my GPS and radar tra- oh, no, there he is. Oh, that was easy. I love playing with you too! I'm so glad that we're friends! How many Pokémon does it take to screw in a light bulb? I'm still working out the calculations. Hold on, let me get the blender. About, um... Let's see, about three cups. Pokemon, two cans, pinto beans, sour cream, and cheddar cheese. Nachos grande, I choose you! Okay. What's not to like about encasing monkeys inside of balls and rolling them down the hill? You know that's illegal in most parts of the world. I was hoping for a different, a different animal in this incarnation of Super Monkey Ball. Super Llama Ball. The look of fear on the llama's face is priceless. These monkeys actually seem to enjoy it. Perhaps because in this version of the game, for the Nintendo Wii, it can be played with the Wii controller or the Wii Balance Board. As the title suggests, you can step and roll. That sounds interesting, but not nearly as interesting as Super Llama Ball Bump and Grind. Alright, now pay attention, this might influence your purchasing decision. The bananas in Super Monkey Ball Step and Roll are Chiquita Bananas. In the instruction manual, it says, for more information about Chiquita, visit www.chiquitabananas.com. By the way, I go bananas for Chiquita Bananas. This game is rated E for everyone, but it has mild cartoon violence. Hopefully against bananas, because they're arrogant. Bananas have had an attitude problem ever since Ms. Pac-Man came out because they were the fruit that gave you the most points. It went to their head, now they're pompous. Bananas. They have potassium, but they don't taste as good as grapes. That should be their marketing slogan. 
Super Monkey Ball Step and Roll is published by Sega. The Super Monkey Ball series actually gained quite a bit of notoriety on the Nintendo GameCube. There's about 70 levels in this version of the game. As I mentioned, it can be played with the Wii Balance Board. I'm using the Wii Controller, which works quite well for this game. You tilt the controller left or right, up or down to move it left or right, or faster and slower to roll the Super Monkey Ball through the mazes as quickly as possible, collecting bananas and dodging things that stop you. It's a clever game, one that's well suited for the Nintendo Wii. Very smooth gameplay, nice high contrast cartoony visuals, the kind of style that works well on the Wii. This is one of those games that can be played by the family because it's a perfect kids game, but not so irritating, aggravating, and repetitive that it can't be enjoyed by adults as well. This is a lot like an arcade game with short, fast, fun games where you can compete against yourself for the fastest time and the highest score. Which would make sense because Super Monkey Ball was originally an arcade game. Until you get used to it, moving the guy around quickly and navigating these mazes is quite tricky. This is one of those games that works great with the Nintendo Wii controller. It's not just tacked on to say it has motion controls. It works extremely well with the Nintendo Wii controller. I did not have a chance to try this with the Wii balance board, but I was sitting on my couch and I didn't fall off. Man, who's playing this? The object is not to hit everything in front of you. Must have been the dog. I like this style of gameplay. I, I reviewed a game in 2009 called Vertigo for the Nintendo Wii, which has a similar style of gameplay, with more of a science fiction thing going on, and, it's, and it was far more frustrating challenging game. This one is more approachable, but to really master it, you will have to play it a lot. That's uh, part of the arcade style. Easy to jump in and play Super Monkey Ball, step and roll. Tough to master. This has a co-op mode and some party games. Many of you are already fans of the Super Monkey Ball series, so you can see what this game looks like here. Those of you who may not have tried this, may want to check it out. It's, it's got that nice perfect blend of arcade style, fun gameplay, and clever use of the motion controls on the Wii. And is published by Sega. And the better they do, the more likely they'll re-release the Sega Genesis. This time with a pack-in game cartridge called Super Llama Ball Bump and Grind. Also available on the 32X. I bought Mario Kart Wii the other day and it came with uh, with this, a steering wheel, the Wii steering wheel. Pretty cool, huh? And the way this thing works is you take a Wii controller and you actually put it into here. Take that, you gotta grab a little strap thingy, pull it through, and slide it in there. Just locks right into place. And I've already reviewed the Wii controller. I think it's a brilliant design. I love how they, they can take this thing and insert it into other controllers, uh, like guns or, or the Guitar Hero guitar. And here's the Wii steering wheel, which works like a steering wheel. If you look on the back of it, it says Wii. It's got the blue ring, which matches the blue ring on the packaging. And the button here, which I think is, is really brilliant, works the, uh, the trigger thing on the Wii controller might be saying, how can you review the Wii steering wheel? You may as well just review a roll of duct tape. Well, I can do that. I have duct tape right there. But I'm not going to. I'm going to talk about the Wii steering wheel. It's solid, has a nice weight to it, especially when the Wii controller is in there. And it's a lot of fun for playing games like Mario Kart, where you steer 
and you can actually just hold the Wii controller up and you don't even need the steering wheel, but this gives you an actual steering wheel feel like you're driving. And I like this a lot. I think this is pretty cool and I'll be playing some more games with this and letting you know how other driving games use the Wii steering wheel, but for Mario Kart it's excellent. And that's the Wii steering wheel. This is my roll of duct tape. This is good because it's really sticky and you can you know, duct tape things with it. Like, uh, I'm gonna duct tape something. Look at that. That's some sticky duct tape. Don't worry guys, it came right off. Everybody panicked when I duct taped a Nintendo. Welcome to another public service announcement from your friends at Classic Game Room. Don't judge a video game by its cover. This is ExciteBot's Trick Racing. Turning tricks on the Wii has never been more fun. Alright kids, get ready for a surprise because this game that looks like we shovelware trash aimed at kids from a developer you've never heard of ripping off Hot Wheels is actually pretty fun. ExciteBot's Trick Racing, released in 2009, will surprise you, assuming you can buy into the absurdity of it all. Racing giant robot insects and bats and frogs on generic track racing style courses using the Wii controller to steer sounds terrible, doesn't it? But it's actually really good. I'm totally blown away by this one because I expected it to be awful. And it's not. It's not a good racing game, but it is really fun. It's a fun video game. It's extreme to the max with two X's and hard to control at times, but that's just kind of what makes ExciteBots ExciteBots. Everything about this game screams loud and extreme, including the music, which fits the style of gameplay. And this is the first Classic Game Room review using the Wii U. That's right, I picked this game out from our collections to use as one of the old Wii games testing the Wii U. And it's backwards compatibility, which as you can see outputs beautiful visuals for Wii games far better than the actual Wii does with improved color saturation and detail. When playing this one you have to use the Wii controller to steer and shake it occasionally to do things like this, spinning around on a pole, robot gymnastics, but once you get into the game it, it just all comes together and works. But whoever designed their packaging and logo should be run over by a giant robot because it looks like a cheap Hot Wheels knockoff aimed at kids. And maybe it is, but it plays so much better than that. It really does. Like other kart racing style games, you try to win races but also pull off crazy tricks, destroy opponents, fly through the air, spin, earn stars, and unlock new vehicles. On paper, there's not a lot that separates this game from any other kart racing style game, except it just plays like complete mayhem. Controlled mayhem, but mayhem nonetheless. And once you get into the game and open up the more challenging races, the game does become far more difficult. There's lots of robot, monster, creature, vehicle things to unlock, and even a harder difficulty setting. The track designs are also better than one might expect. There's lots of different ways to drive them, all kinds of hidden things and poles to spin on and stuff to smash. 
And even though the environments themselves are fairly generic, they look really good, especially on the Wii U, which does a great job up converting this to 1080i. So I've got to give that thing some credit. And also give a big shout out thank you to George from North Brunswick, New Jersey, which I mistakenly called New Brunswick in the final zone review. But it's not my fault I blame New Jersey for having too many news and Norths in their state to begin with. Anyway, thanks George, and hey, thanks for the Fairchild Channel F, I'm working on fixing one of the controllers. Annoyingly, this game is not backwards compatible with that. Excitebots Trick Racing. Don't let the packaging or the fact this is probably in the bargain bin deceive you. It's actually worth playing if you like kart racing games on the Wii or the Wii U. It also has two player, and while I didn't test it, supposedly plays online as well. Nice landing, giant praying mantis car thing. Excite bots better than you'll expect it to be. Remington, Super Slam, Africa. It's a beautiful day for a safari. That sounds like the bad guy from James Bond's Live and Let Die. If he has a white top hat, I'm running away. It's Remington, Super Slam hunting, Africa. Time to waste endangered species by the thousands. Extreme chain. And then have them served up in your very own personalized Denny's Super Slam value meal. Heart shot. I would like the wildebeest Triple with two eggs scrambled, hash browns, and coffee. Now, please. It may sound like a contradiction Extreme in terms chain. when you order coffee with now followed by please, but honestly, with coffee, that's what you gotta do. Because you wanna Extreme get it there chain. fast, but at the same time, you wanna be polite. You just gotta be clear about that. Coffee. Now! Extreme chain! Please. And don't forget the wildebeest eyeballs. Five seconds left. Or meerkat brains. Mmm. Great with hot sauce. Remington Super Slam Hunting Africa. I've previously reviewed Remington Super Slam Hunting North America, but Africa has bigger animals. Like elephants that are mutated and angry and want to eat you. That's what you'll be fighting off in this game. So it's like Far Cry 2 mixed with Resident Evil 5, minus the hot chicks and flamethrowers. No, don't shoot Babar! Ha, <laughs> but I already did, sorry. Is that a meerkat trying to drive my jeep? Go back to your manor, bitch! They're getting smarter every day. They must be stopped with force. Remington Super Slam Hunting, Africa is similar to the other Remington shooting games in that it has a nice amount of cheesy arcade-style shooting action combined with predictable, fully functional controls. And some of the best death screams ever recorded. Have you ever seen a hippo? They're big. They're like buses with teeth. Extreme chain. Triple chain. Ah, you see, I'm doing it wrong here. You're supposed to hop on the alligators, but don't jump on their heads. Because they'll eat you, but if you hop on their back, you'll jump to safety. Let's head through the murky waters. That sounds like the smart thing to do. Who's the idiot hunting? Where's the chainsaw? Does Remington make chainsaws? Or is there a game called Still Super Slam Hunting? S-T-I-A... How, how do you pronounce that? I know how you pronounce that. Long shot. Long shot. There's not a day that goes by that I don't wish that I could do sound effects Extreme like Michael change. Winslow from Spaceballs and Police Academy. That guy was the best. 
<laughs> Long shots. Oh, aliens, obviously. Like, he had every sound effect down. Look, a mask filled with coins. It's the realism that makes Super Slam Hunting Africa amazing. Actually, it's the predictability. Because the whole game is like this. And this is fun. If there's a hell for meerkats, I just sent him there. Extreme chain. Oh, the driving level. This one's fun. I was trying to shoot the driver's arm repeatedly, but I kept missing. Damn it. Next time I'll just use a knife. Here's where I'm trying to shoot down the airplane. I thought that was a Discovery Channel film crew, but maybe it was just someone playing barnstorming. We're making our way to Denny's right now for Remington Super Slam Hunting! Denny's. As you play through this game, you unlock different weapons and you can post your scores to a global leaderboard on the Nintendo Wii. I'm playing this with the Wii Zapper, executing animals for points with predictable Wii Zapper controls. And admittedly, the game isn't a great looking game, but it is fun. Extreme chain. And I like that you can shoot animals and coins will pop out of them or shoot idols or whatever they are. You have found a treasure. People are charging. Which spew forth dozens of coins to shoot and collect. Can you use those coins for pinball? People! People! People are charging! And watch out, the animals will eat you and attack you for the coins in your pocket because they also want to play pinball. It's Africa! There's nothing a million men from Mars will ever do. Isn't that one of the lyrics? No, it's not, is it? Long shot! Triple J! Heart shot! Extreme chain! Long shot! <laughs> 